Hi there and welcome to Global Goals. In this video we'll be previewing Group H, the final group of this year's World Cup, uh, which will see one of Ghana, Portugal, South Korea and Uruguay look to advance to the knockout stages. Um, let's start with one of the four African teams in this year's tournament. Um, Harry, what do you think of Ghana's chances? Well, having needed a away goals to make it through their final qualification game, Ghana may be considered lucky to be here, but the West African side will nevertheless be helpful of their chances. Led by the IU brothers and Brighton right-back Tariq Lamptey, Otto Addo's side will at least be aiming to avenge their 2010 quarter-final loss, which saw fellow Group H hopefuls Uruguay and Luis Suarez handle on the line to deny Ghana an extra-time winner. That prevented an Afri African side reaching the semi-finals for the first ever time. Perhaps Ghana can make amends and achieve that feat this time around. What do you think, Oez? Yeah, look, Charlie, uh, Harry, excuse me, it's going to be difficult given uh, the team that they're going to come up against, which we'll, which we'll come on to, but they surprised everyone last time around, so there's no, no reason for that not being the case again this time. Um, Nicholas, obviously, we've discussed some of the talent there. You've got the likes of Lamptey, even though he's not playing for Brighton and he's <coughs> out at the moment. He's still a great player. Yeah. Thomas Partey at Arsenal, who I know, obviously, you're an Arsenal fan. You'll be watching him regularly. So there's a decent crop there to cause some upsets, isn't there? Yeah, definitely. They've probably got one of the best t sort of squads outside of the, you know, the sort of main collection of well-known teams. So, yeah, looking forward to seeing them play. It'll be interesting to see how they get on. I I'd back them to get out of the group. Oh, that's, in, that's an interesting shout. Um, mm -hmm. Charlie, do you echo Nicholas's, th uh, Nicholas's thoughts? Do you see them uh, getting out of the group as well at one of Uruguay or Portugal's expense? Uh, I, I sort of think they'll maybe be second or third. I didn't think they'll win the group, obviously, but uh, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit inclined to think that they won't make it through the group. I think they've got talent, though. I like we said, they've got Lamptey. Joy Nye is a great example as well. Uh, he's had a very good goals uh, for them. So I do think, in general, I don't think they'll make it out of the group, unfortunately, but I think with the, the crop of talent in the other, in the other teams, I, I just can't see them going, going through. Yeah, you do feel with Ghana, like they have kind of drawn the short straw a little bit with the draw they've been given. Maybe a slightly easier group and they could have, they could have made advances, but it's going to be difficult to see. Uh, now, the favourites of this group are obviously Portugal, you know, with the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo and Bruno Fernandes, João Felix, among others in their ranks. It's, uh, you must be confident about them going through, aren't you, Harry? Yes, definitely always. This could obviously be Ronaldo's last tournament, so he'll want to make an impact, but the problem is whether Portugal will be too reliant on him. They do have a very talented squad with players such as Jao Felix and Bernardo Silva capable of taking over a tournament on their own. If they can click as a team, then they could be on for something special as they seek their second major tournament win in six years. Ronaldo's form does seem to have dipped since the start of the season and has found himself in the papers for the wrong reasons. So we shall see whether the superstar exits the international stage with a whimper or finds glory once again. Back to you always. Okay, sorry, yeah. Look, the narrative as it so often is will be around Ronaldo and you know, as much as he's been a great servant for Portugal over the years, Charlie, could he actually be a hindrance for them this year? You know, um, with, with, the, with the rest of the squad being so talented, could they be held back by, by his presence? I see it seems to be Ronaldo is a bit of an, a, a problem at the minute, um, but I do think that his mentality heading into tournaments can be very crucial for, for a team of, like Portugal that are very youthful and, and uh, the good experience that he's got can really be capitalised very well. I mean, Ronaldo would really want to sign this one off perfectly with the World Cup, but I, I can't see Portugal really getting that far other than maybe the quarterfinals. Um, but Ronaldo's record, I mean, 800 plus goals in all competitions, I think the guy... Uh, deserved a bit of praise and we've got players like Bernardo Silva for example with his incredible passing success rate there'll be players like that they'll be very useful you don't always need Ronaldo uh, dare I say yeah Nicholas Ronaldo or no Ronaldo there's definitely a lot of talent in this uh, uh, in this world of players how far do you see them progressing yeah I agree with Charlie I think probably the quarterfinals I think what Charlie said is right I think they need to know that they don't always need to endlessly pass to Ronaldo. They do have very good other players like Ronaldo Silva, Jao Felix. So, yeah, I'd say in the quarterfinals, but you don't know, they're a sort of team that can just hang in there without maybe being quite as star studded as some other teams. But, yeah, I'd say the quarterfinals. Yeah, you do think it'll be a matter of whether or how large the spectre of Ronaldo looms, so to speak. Um, now, one of the tournament's outsiders, I think it's fair to say, are South Korea. Obviously, they defeated Germany last, last time round, which will and I'll put a smile on many English fans' faces. Um, they've obviously got to the semi-finals before as well. So, you know, they've got decent pedigree, but how are you feeling about their chances, uh, Harry? 
Not particularly great feeling about their chances away, but with a group of relative unknowns, it obviously seems as if they have a small chance of progressing through the group. But you never know, a side with the firepower of Hyung Min Son is capable of causing any side issues. However, they will need to be careful again to not be too predictable and over-reliant on their best player, and that's where players like Wang Hee Chan of Wolves come in. The fact that they beat Germany and Russia should give them confidence, but if they hope to progress, you feel they will need to get something out of Uruguay and Ghana, their first two games, before they face Portugal in their last group fixture. With Son leading the line, it'll be interesting to see whether South Korea can be anything more than just a fun team to watch. Do you think they can always? Uh, I don't know, Harry. Look, um, Son's obviously their main player and he has, he's had a tough time of it this season. I think the way uh, Conte's, uh, Conte plays with that team isn't really suitable to him as such, or to, to the extent that it was last season. Chang obviously mentioned that he's not being great at Wolves either. I know fans aren't too, uh, you know, too pleased with him. Tali, what do you think of South Korea's prospects? Could they do anything similar to what they did last time around? Um, well, Han Wee Chan's form isn't uh, too positive at the moment, but we can look elsewhere. I mean, South Korea do have a good baseline with a player like Hume Min Song. 23 goals in open play last season. They might not have had the best start this season, but I do think they can capitalise on that opportunity. He's very good going through runs and he's very good on the counter-attack. So I think they've got to capitalise on, on Son. But overall, I think their their whole squad doesn't doesn't really equal to a, a great success for them. I do think they won't uh, go through to the round of 16. Yeah, I think I think you do think that if they are going to do anything, it's going to be down to Son reigniting his season and picking up his form. And Nicholas, if if that does happen, do you think they could potentially get through this group, or is it just going to be too difficult with what they've got what they've got up against, what they've got coming up against them? Sorry. Yeah, you, you never know. Yeah, I think it's tough with Portugal, Ghana, and Uruguay, but you never know. I mean, positive result in the opening game, and yeah, a player like Son is always is always an asset for any team, uh, yeah, as, we, as we've seen with Tottenham. So. Yeah, it's unlikely, but you never know. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree with the pair of you there. And I think that's general consensus across the board with South Korea. Probably not going to do much, but you never know. There's always a couple of surprise packages um, at the World Cups, and it could be again. One, it could be them once again. But um, finally, for Group H, we've got the winners of the first ever World Cup, Uruguay. Um, can Diego Alonso's team realistically expect to uh, challenge for glory once more, Harry? Or is it just a case of trying to get to the last stages? I think they should be trying to com uh, compete here away. So, um, with a team field of experience and pedigree, Uruguay should absolutely fancy their chances of qualifying from their group for the fourth consecutive World Cup, but have a big task ahead of them if they are to become just the fourth country to win the tournament at least three times. La Celeste will need Luis Suarez and Diego Godin to roll back the years in what is likely the pair's national team swan song, while the youth and creativity of Darwin Nunez and Federico Valverde mean the South American side will go into the tournament fancying their chances of beating any side on their day. Back to you, always. Yeah, Harry, as you alluded to there, look, you've got an interesting crop of um, experience amongst the youth, the likes of Nunez uh, coming through, and um, you've got Valverde at Madrid who's pulling up a lot of trees. But then you've got the likes of Guardian and him and his season pros, you know, uh, Nali pros. Charlie, which one of those uh, contrasts do you think would be more crucial to your requires prospects? Well, I certainly think they'll be through the group, I certainly think they'll get through. Um, but I think they're their talent. They've got a perfect blend of experience and youth. Darwin Nunes is a great example. He's been very good at, in the Portuguese league. At the minute, he's not really got his foot ready for Liverpool. And I, d I do think they're sort of struggling in that sense. So in in some areas, I think they can they can probably improve. Godin's a great example. He's very good defensively at the back. Yeah, Nicholas, you know, you've got the likes of Guardian and Jimenez there. I know you've got quite strong, view, strong views on their play style. Um, first, uh, how, how do you think that could potentially help them? Yeah, I, mean, I think it will help them maybe in games that maybe where they're not quite in the game. They can sort of just, you know, get sort of, not time waste exactly, but get free kicks and that sort of thing. And then, um, so yeah, so I think it will help them. But I think it might also, they do have to maybe be a bit more expansive because they have got some good attacking players, Cavani, Suarez, etc. So, yeah, I think it could be both a help and a hindrance. And one word answer, uh, how, how far will they get? Uh, I'd say knocked out the last 16. OK, sweet. Um, uh, thanks for that, Nicholas. That's unfortunately all we've got time for today. And um, that wraps up our content for previewing this World Cup. So I hope you've enjoyed everything. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for staying with us until now. Um, and goodbye.